Um, yeah, so my name is Wayne Ryder. I'm a Baladong Noongar man from the northern region. Grew up in northern. Um, so from pretty much a young age, um, my family um, split up and me and my sisters were raised by my grandfather. Um, so he did the best he could. Um, so growing up through my younger years and my teenage years, you know, I was pretty much bouncing around to family's houses, mates, you know, couch surfing or just staying wherever I could just to fit in. Um, very talented footballer I was, so growing up, um, I had an ambition of playing AFL. Um, played a bit of waffle footy through uh, my teenage years and my early 20s, um, but, you know, the injuries took its toll on me and ended my career pretty early. Um, you know, found a partner and we had a daughter together. Um, you know, pretty much, you know, it wasn't the right fit for each other, so there was always, you know, arguments and fighting and um, end up going down the wrong path and, you know, having a baby with another girl, so that pretty much, you know, ended our relationship and um, we stuck together, try to, you know, pull through it and, but, you know, didn't really fit and, you know, when my footy career ended, I didn't really have finished, you know, dropped out of school and didn't really have anything to fall back on, so, you know, got into labouring and mining and started doing a FIFO position, which really took its toll on my mental health and my life and um, destroyed my relationships and, um, so I decided to come back to Perth and, you know, try to mend my relationships and start working in Perth in the same kind of industry and um, fell into the wrong crowd, you know, around that time and um, started using drugs. So it was at the start of it, it was just as recreational, you know, fitting in with the crowd, um, hanging out with the boys on the weekends, but, you know, drug use really, you know, is no life for anybody. Um, it took control of my life and, you know, at one stage that's all I depended on, that's all I relied on, wasn't seeing my kids. Um, just wanting to, you know, go and find the next hit or, you know, hang around the guys that were doing it and it was a real destructive, violent lifestyle and um, I, you know, really hit rock bottom and the major part was the respect, you know, I built up a lot of respect through um, who I was growing up as a footballer and being a leader, you know, I, I captained my Waffle Colts team and, you know, was a leader in, throughout the community and, you know, for people to look at me as a drug user and um, someone living with, you know, suicidal thoughts on a daily basis was um, wasn't good for myself. You know, every time I used drugs, I hated it every day. But it was an addiction, and I struggled through that addiction for over a three-year period. And um, I remember to this day, you know, where where I was at my lowest and living out of my car, homeless. Um, I went through a drug-induced psychosis, and. Just, just really didn't know what I was doing and you know, wanted to end my life and I probably would have. You know, I remember one night um, I rang my ex-partner to talk to my daughter and luckily she wouldn't let me speak to her otherwise I probably would have went through it. Um, you know, after that night I really sat and thought to myself, you know, I can either go two ways. Um, keep going and probably end up in jail, or, or worse, probably dead, you know, or um, I could try and pull myself out of it. So, luckily, I was strong enough to um, go and seek support. And I was fortunate enough, you know, when I, when I went out and sought out support, you know, the first guys that I interacted with were the right fit for me. And, um, I did a bit of counselling and a bit of group work and um, probably four or five days into recovery 
um, my grandfather who raised me passed away and that was really hard at that time to continue on through recovery. But luckily I did um, push through and um, you know, just push through and kept seeing people on a daily basis, on a weekly basis and um, set goals and ambitions for myself and, and I think what got me through as well is um, doing a lot of group work. A lot of guys used to come up to me after the sessions and say, you know, having you in the group and just the way you talk and what you say keeps me coming back. So, you know, I thought, um, why don't I go and, you know, do something about this and study? So I went and studied and you know, completed a Cert 4 in mental health and a diploma in counselling, which um, I graduated at the top of my class and um, went out and just found work with Palmerston Association as an Aboriginal community worker. And when I first started, I thought that it was very surprising. You know, this year will be Palmerston's 40th year. And I've been with those guys now for over two and a half years, but I'm the first Aboriginal worker to actually work out of the Perth office. So, you know, they've been around 40 years and they were wondering why Aboriginal people weren't seeking support, weren't coming through the doors, or the ones that did, you know, weren't pushing on and weren't, you know, carrying through. Um, but with the support that I showed, you know, all the Aboriginal people that come through there, within the first six months, their client base increased by 800%. And, um, I just love what I do, passionate about what I do, helping others that are going through a similar um, side to what I went through and um, I pretty much built the role um, from where it was at the start and palmerston has been supporting me ever since. Um, but since when I started in the role I found a real disconnect between community and, and service providers and service providers as well with each other. <laughs> Sorry. Going to off the stage, isn't it? <laughs> um, but yeah, so I, I, I thought that I needed to try and make something happen and show a bit more support out in our community. You know, it, it wasn't enough just me being one worker and, and coming into an organisation and trying to support the whole of the Metro Perth area. Um, for Aboriginal people to seek support um, with struggles. So I, you know, I go out and I talk on a regular basis, you know, to people like this and, you know, tell my story and just show that there is hope, you know, even though you're down in, you know, your darkest times, there is hope for you to pull yourself out and make something of yourself. And, um, and also, you know, building that network of, you know, workers that can support in this area. Um, I created the Wagamore Cuttagen Festival, which we rolled out um, at the end of last year. And it was really about, it, it was around suicide. There was a lot of suicides at the end of 2017, early 2018, um, especially in the Aboriginal community. And um, I went to a through few community uh, meetings in the and the community was really screaming out for services to do more and I think you know, by you know, bringing uh, workers and community members together in a more you know, comfortable setting, especially Aboriginal people, you don't normally get them walking into a hospital or going into a mainstream service to you know, try and help with their issues. Um, I've been there and it's, it's not easy you know, just to accept you, that you have a problem and you have issues that you need help with. So, so trying to support, you know, more people out in the community in a, in a different way um, was a goal of mine and, and one way was with the festival and, you know, bringing my fiancé on board as a project manager and, you know, it was pretty much an idea that I drew up on a piece of paper. It took me about five minutes and, and 18 months later it was a festival where we had 50 storeholders, um, you know, six activities. We raised over $60,000 know, for the festival and 
Um, we estimated anywhere between five to 700 community members come through on the day. So, um, you know, if, if one person can pull themselves out and show a bit of an initiative and try and support the community and try and support, you know, my people in a way that I did, if we had 10 of me, then, you know, we'd be fine. So. <laughs> But yeah, that, that's pretty much my story, you know, I, I went through the lowest times of my life and uh, me getting out was purely, you know, for my kids, but I, I realised pretty much straight away in recovery that I had to do it for myself, you know, I couldn't be there for them as their father, as their role model, if I wasn't, you know, right myself, so. I worked really hard in those first stages of, you know, making myself the best person I could. And, you know, now I see my kids on a regular basis. I'm engaged with a beautiful fiance who's sitting here recording me. <laughs> <laughs> um, we've got a two-year-old now and, you know, life's going good for us. And I'm in a job where I'm passionate about helping others and want to make a difference within the community. So, yeah, I get up every day trying to make a difference.